All right, guys, so today we are going to be doing our watershed lab. And what the watershed lab is gonna look at is what happens um, in terms of water running into certain areas of the land. So we're gonna use the model that I have here, which is just a somewhat crinkled up piece of paper so that it has some ridges and some low areas. And we are going to take a look at how things like pollution, sediments, and other forms of runoff can make it into waterways. So watersheds are basically areas that all drain to the same general point. So if you have a high area that all kind of like drains towards a low area, that might be a watershed in a piece of land that you're looking at. So what we'll be doing with our model here, so our watershed paper, is kind of marking out certain locations and then we're gonna make it rain. So we will see what will happen um, when certain locations like rivers and streams and forests influence the way that water flows in a watershed. So when you're answering questions for this lab, make sure you're referring back to your notes from class. And then I will also be kind of talking you through the process here. And you're welcome to do this lab at home. If you happen to have washable markers, so like you'll need Crayola markers like what I have here and a permanent marker. You do have to actually have the permanent marker because you need a markers that will run like when they're wet and markers that won't run. Um, if you have something like cotton balls or cotton like circles uh, used for cosmetics, or in my case, I'm gonna be using felt, uh, you can try to put together your own watershed and then you would just need like a water bottle of some sort. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just needs to have water in it. So if you wanna give it a shot at home yourself, have at it. Um, other than that, we're just gonna go ahead and work through it in the video here and you can follow along with us. So the first thing that we want to do is I'm gonna take my blue marker and the blue marker is going to represent the high points of land here. So my crumpled paper, what I'm looking for is like right in here where I have the top of the mountain range and I'm going to color on the top of that. So what that's gonna basically be is that when this area is hit with water, it's going to run in the direction that's basically heading down. So if this is the highmost point right here, it's gonna run towards the lowermost point. So I'm gonna keep on marking those areas. And I'm using a good bit of color so that when we do apply water, we will see it run. All right, so those are all high points. So basically these are all like ridges. And ridges can kind of help us identify watersheds and the way things move. A little bit of a high point there. Because water is gonna flow downhill, it's just gravity. And if we can find those high points, then we can kind of make some predictions about the way water is gonna move. So just pretend that we're kind of looking at a mountain right in the center here and it's all flowing into these lower areas. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is use a red marker and I'm gonna mark a couple areas that are gonna be pesticides, herbicides, or even fertilizer. So let's say that we have maybe a farm. I'm gonna go ahead and write farm right here, kind of up in this area. And I'm gonna use a good bit of red ink to kind of mark that off. Maybe we have like a roadway or something kind of over here that runs through the mountains. And so there might be a lot of like car oil and other things on the road that can get washed off uh, with the runoff. And then we'll add one more on this side for good luck. All right, so these are all gonna be things that can be picked up in rainwater that's running off of our watershed here. All right, the next thing we're gonna use uh, is an orange marker, and these are gonna be toxic waste sites. So unfortunately, there's a lot of old toxic waste sites in the US that have not yet been cleaned up. Um, a lot of these are targeted for cleanup, but just haven't really been cleaned up yet. So this kind of stuff can easily be run off across the land if it's underground, um, if it's leaking, water can help carry it to different areas as well, so it can be a real problem. So we're gonna make some orange marks kind of over here. I'm gonna put a waste site down here. And then let's put one that someone was really bad and dumped really high up in the mountains here illegally. All right. Next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna use a permanent marker this time and we are gonna mark where rivers and streams might be. So what I'm gonna basically do is look for creases in my paper and I'm gonna kind of follow them with the marker. And now I'm using a permanent marker here, so Sharpie, uh, so that when I apply water to this, it's not gonna run. So kind of coming off the mountain here, I've got some folds that kind of look like they go down this way. So maybe the river splits and heads that way a little bit. And it looks like there might be another one that kind of runs through here because there's a bit of a valley there. All right, same thing on this side. Kind of running down to this area. 
And then let's say that it kind of runs down here too. And then this actually is another good kind of loop. So let's say that this particular river kind of splits off. So anything I've got in black on here is acting as a waterway. And then there's a little bit of kind of a low point here. So we're gonna actually make this a lake. And we're gonna call it Lake Wildcat. And then we'll say that this lake has a river tributary. And then we kind of got a little bit of one that runs that way as well. And that looks like all of our major low points. So what we're gonna look for is kind of like how these areas could be also picking up toxins. So when we do apply water, basically we're gonna make it rain. How are these areas impacted by that? All right, last thing we're gonna do uh, is take some pieces of felt and we're gonna apply them to our map here and see kind of how the felt, which is acting as trees or a forest, can influence the way that runoff occurs. So I'm gonna get some glue, get our felt stuck on here. All right, so I'm gonna put a forest at kind of the top of this lake and I'm gonna put it right underneath this toxic waste site I put right here. So let's say that this river actually runs through the forest. So we'll see what the impact of the runoff is going to be. I'm gonna put a rather large forest much further down so that we can kind of see the effect of if rainwater is already kind of draining off, maybe gravity on that. And I have to make my big forest I cut out a little smaller here. And then let's put one just under our farm here as well. And that'll give us some ideas. Like farms have lots of runoff. So like animal waste, they might have fuel for maybe farm vehicles, um, all kinds of stuff that could actually get into waterways and cause lots of problems. So you guys have heard about eutrophication or that overgrowth of algae over and over again from me. So farms can definitely contribute to that, especially with chicken and cow waste because it's full of nitrogen. So what we're gonna do is see if that farm actually helps prevent some of that from moving to other parts of our watershed. And then what I'm gonna do is leave this one over here um, in the top part empty. And that particular watershed it has no forest, it's just got toxic waste, and we'll see how bad that toxic waste becomes a problem for that area. All right, so our last thing we need to do here, we've got Lake Wildcat, we've got rivers in black, we've got our mountain ridges in blue, so all the water should be running away from there. That's gonna kind of show us the water movement. We've got um, some pesticides and herbicides and such in red, and then toxic materials in orange. We're gonna see how these move. So what I'm gonna do is use, again, my spray bottle here to make it rain. And what I want you to do, and you can rewatch this as many times as you feel is necessary, watch where stuff goes. So we should definitely see the blue running all over the map, but watch where like our toxins go, especially the ones that are above where like a forest is, so, like this one here that I said this was all like roadway. So watch like this one, we have a toxic waste site, see if it, the forest kind of helps with that a little bit, helps maybe protect or not help the lake whatsoever. And then compare that to our blank empty side over here where there's no forest, let's say that's just all rock, and how that is gonna be impacted instead. So the questions that you're gonna be answering um, will be about how things like the vegetative cover, which is forest, things like the rivers and whatnot, all influence the way that this water is moving. So let's go ahead and make it rain. So watch what happens here. My spray bottle's not cooperating. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> all right, so watch that blue running, watch that orange kind of making its way down the mountain. You can see our red there starting to move. Sure, we really soak these upward areas here. All right, so watch what's going on with this. Notice our toxin over here, no forest. So what we see happening is a lot of that toxin is running off. You see it just smacked into a waterway there. If we look over at our farm here, notice the forest here kind of like blocked a little bit of the red. The red kind of like went around it. All right, if we look at this forest up here with this toxic waste site, we see that the orange actually, if I look at it real closely, I'm not seeing it run off anywhere. But this red here has run right into Lake Wildcat. So definitely not great for that lake, especially if that is something toxic. Notice all the blue is running like with gravity down the mountains. So we see it kind of like this place draining into these waterways. So that's how some of these rivers can form is this runoff can actually carry it right into a river. If we look like this red here, notice that it's again done similarly to what we see with the farm. It's kind of like moving around our forest. We don't see it just like 
washing straight down, the forest is kind of stopping it like a little bit like the orange has over here. All right, I'm gonna get it a little wet again if it'll cooperate, see if we can get any more movement here. anything else going on all right so notice that definitely on this side our orange has really started to make quite a mess same here this forest has done its job so is that one helping protect us from that runoff this poor lake though has definitely just been polluted so what I want you guys to do is you're going to take a look at the questions on your lab. You'll talk about how pesticides and other pollutants migrate among the, around the watershed so basically how are they moving we're going to take a look at how these forests have either helped or not helped uh, the toxins from spreading to different areas, how they might prevent toxins from moving to certain areas as well. You're going to want to talk about the high points versus the low points and why water is flowing the direction that it's flowing. And you'll go ahead and answer the questions within your lab. You have 10 reflection questions you should be answering. So if you need to rewatch the video, look for the movement that we see of that red and orange, those pesticides and toxic things. Remember red is pesticides, herbicides, roadway runoff. Orange is toxic materials, so like really dangerous stuff. And then remember our green on here is forests. Our black lines are rivers, which is why you're not seeing them run. And then the blue is acting as that water running off from those high to low points. All right, so go ahead and answer the questions on your lab and get that submitted when you're done. And let me know if you have any questions in the chat for class.